So when analytical methods fail, we need to go back and use numerical methods. Um, so we've seen that with numerical integration, so using the trapezium rule, the mid-ordinate rule, Simpson's rule, etc. Um, or we've also seen it with just solving equations. Uh, if you've got to that point in A-level maths where you're doing uh, the x equals g of x method or the newton raphson method, for example, um, they're kind of our fallback positions to be able to solve equations. If we're solving um, differential equations, then uh, we've looked at some very particular formats for that that allowed it to work. Um, whereas if you go in, so the cases that we looked at were linear uh, differential equations, first order and second order. However, if you go into nonlinear, um, then finding nice solutions becomes a lot harder. And that's where we've got to start to rely on numerical methods in order to be able to solve them. So that adds a bit of a complication for us. Now, how do we get around that? Now, you might be wondering, um, what would one of these differential equations look like? Well, quite a straightforward one that we could work with, or straightforward looking, would be something like dy by dx is equal to, let's say, x cubed or plus y cubed. OK, so here we've got a problem because the, it's not linear because of that y cubed. So, so the methods that we have tried to employ before, um, we can't anymore. And that causes a problem. So how uh, do we go about this? Well, one way is to use Euler's step-by-step -step method. Now, depending on the differential equation that you get, um, whether it's dy by dx equals some function of x or dy by dx equals some function of x and y, the formula is pretty much the same. Okay, So essentially, I'm just going to be doing this derivation once. And you'll be able to see where that's really coming from. So let's say um, we've been able to solve the differential equation. Okay, and we have this y equals some function of x or function of x and y. Okay, and we've been able to solve it, um, and the curve looks something like this. Okay, much of the same way as I would sketch if we were doing trapezium rule or something like that. So the idea is that if I start here and this is x0 then this point here is a point that has a corresponding y value. Let's call that y0. So this height is y0. Then we could have a point that's very close to it, this point here. So this would be x1, and this would be y1. And this distance is our step length, which we'll call h. So it's looking very similar to what I would do if we were doing uh, trapezium rule, mid-ordinate rule, etc. Okay, so very similar to that at this point. Now the idea is that if I know a point on the curve, and that would be given by one of my initial conditions, or boundary condition for the differential equation. If I know that point, then maybe I can get to this point using uh, a straight line. If it's close enough, I could approximate this using a straight line. Okay, That is what Euler's step-by-step -step method is going to try to do. Okay, um, And that's going to allow us to estimate that next point, or approximate that next point on the curve. So the gradient would be the difference in the y-coordinates, y1 take away y0, divided by the difference in the x-coordinates, which is just h. Now, as that is the gradient of the line between uh, those two points, I know what the gradient of the function is, because if I use the dy by dx equals some function of x and y, then this is telling me that the gradient function is f of x, y. So the gradient 
of that line can be written as f of x0, y0, where this is the gradient of the curve at the point x0, y0, at that point there. Multiplying through by h and adding y0 to both sides, I can write y1 is equal to y0 plus h times f of x0, y0. And so here, I can get the next coordinate up. And of course, this is all dependent on how um, close h is, how small h is. Uh, that will give a better approximation. Um, and of course, if the, making sure that the curve is reasonably smooth as well will allow that to work. Now, if we want to generalise this, then what I'm saying here is that then I could work out the next point along. So this point, by saying, well, y2 should be equal to y1 plus h lots of f of x1, y1. OK, and I could keep on going over and over and over again. So... This is where the formula comes from, and it's in the AQA formula booklet. So for this, we've got yr plus 1 is equal to yr plus hf of xr yr. OK, where we can get the next step so that uh, xr um, plus 1 is your x are your previous one plus h. So all that's saying is that to get x1, I need to do x0 plus h. And to get x2, I need to do x1 plus h. So we've done it for the f of xy's, right? It's exactly the same uh, derivation for this one as well. Now, just to like make it clear that it's just uh, a different looking formula. The formula booklet uses n, so y n plus 1, but that's fine, it doesn't matter, is y n plus h times f of x n, where x n plus 1, the next x term is x n plus h. Okay? So this is Euler's step by step method. Uh, and I'm going to show you an example of using it in the next video.